Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create an encrypted folder on your computer. This is for either Mac or PC. I'm going to show you how this works on the PC today. And the advantage of this is say you took your laptop overseas or your little memory stick overseas, your little USB thumb drive, you can um, have that things on that encrypted so that if you lose it then people still can't get to that information they need to know your password uh, which is going to be a very secure password as we outline here because if it's not uh, that's all, all not much point doing that so let's get started by going to truecrypt.org um, this little link here is the um, tutorial that I'm basically creating a video of this tutorial here so that's the link for that but um, if you want to actually start the download just go to truecrypt.org and then click on downloads here and then here's the PC version and the Mac version notice it's available for Windows 7 Windows Vista XP and 2000 so click on download I've already done that um, and run the installer which I've also done just click yes and OK to everything and have all the boxes checked at the end it'll prompt you to see if uh, you want to see the tutorial which will open up to the page I just described a second ago so having done all that we go down to our desktop there's a little shortcut to it and you'll see TrueCrypt on the desktop here so let's click on that now the first thing we have to do is create a volume so we're going to choose this top option here click next top option click next we're going to select a file this is an empty file that we're going to start off with um, just ignore those two there I'm going to create a new one called safe for you can call this whatever you want it's just something that um, you can you know, you know where it is in the computer and uh, and you know what it's called so in this my case it's in the my documents folder and it's called safe for so we don't want to save the history there um, next let's just use there's a few different algorithms here we're just going to go with the default algorithm today and then you've got to specify a size. Now, um, just for this exercise, I'm just going to create a small one, say 50 megs, so I'll be able to fit, you know, quite a lot of office documents like Excel spreadsheets and and uh, Word documents, but you know, not a lot else with with something that small. Um, I haven't got much hard drive space left there, so otherwise I might create something around two gig. So next, the password. Now it's really important that you choose a secure password. Um, just read read the information here they suggest at least 20 characters long now this is a bit of a, a drama for a lot of people because they're not used to creating secure passwords and a lot of people just use dictionary words or a combination of um, dictionary words like for example cat mouse dog which is just no good because if someone really wanted to get to your stuff um, they can easily just use uh, uh, something called a brute force method which just sort of attacks your <laughs> your machine with with a bunch of um, words from the dictionary so if your words in the dictionary it'll probably get cracked so to get around that you've got to um, create funny characters such as these you know you could for example if you wanted to use the word say if you wanted to use cat mouse dog you could use the letter C then use a for the at symbol and then T um, M and then O, you could use the letter zero, or you could use zero. See, little things like that use substitutions so that it makes it easier for you to remember. Um, what else can I advise you there? Just whatever you do, you have to have this written down somewhere safe, or just you can't forget this password because your data will uh, not be able to be recovered. So that's kind of the compromise with security. So uh, just play it safe so for this example and for this example only I'm just going to create something really simple I'll just display the password so you can see um, so I'll repeat you should not create a password like this because this is really easy to crack just for this example I'm making it easy for myself okay and they're saying use something more than 20 characters which if I was doing this for real uh, I would do now this is where it gets weird what we have to do is actually move the mouse around and it's going to track that movement and turn it into an encryption and some sort of encryption algorithm so the longer you do this for and the more random that you do it um, then the better the algorithm is when I first read this I couldn't believe it I thought, thought they were playing tricks on me 
very clever. So um, do this for yeah at least say 30 seconds so we'll just skip now. Once you've done that just click format and the bigger your hard drive is the longer this will take um, I think. So that one was only a small volume of 50 meg so it won't take that long and click OK. Now that we're done we can press exit the next step is we have to assign a drive letter to it so that it actually shows up under my computer here as its own drive. So the C drive is the normal computer drive, your D drive might be your CD drive or DVD drive you put in a memory stick that might become your E drive. So we're going to call this um, maybe T for TrueCrypt. You can use whatever, whatever letter you like as long as it's not taken by something else. Probably uh, best to be careful if you're running a network, um, small business network or um, you know, in an office there might already, the T drive might already be in use so it, I'm sure it will probably prompt you for that but just be aware that if it doesn't work try something else. Probably best to have a look in my computer first and just have a look around see what's being used and pick a letter that's not being used. My computer, by the way, if you can't see it there, you'll see it on the start menu and just click there. Okay, so now we're going to mount the volume. Ah, sorry, select the file first. So we go back to my documents where we put it. I chose safe, I created safe 4 and we selected drive T and then we're going to mount it. At this point, it will ask us for the password. which is going to be more than 20 characters, right? Or at least. And then we, what have we got here? Mount options. Um, okay, so there's a few options here. Read only. Um, just trying to see if anything's relevant to most of you people out there. I think leave them all unchecked actually. You can read up more if you want to get into the geeky aspects of this whole thing. Now, uh, if we click on my computer, there it is. It's called Local Disk T. I can probably re I might be able to rename that. Yeah, we can. So I just clicked once on the text. Actually click once to select and then once on the text and you can rename that. So there it is, there's your safe. So what do we do now? Um, it will, okay, so it will unmount when you restart the computer. So let's take an example where, let's right click on this first and choose, uh, where are we? Create shortcut and it prompts us, we click yes and that puts it on the desktop. So, I've got this file I've set up here. Let's say we want that locked away. We can drag and drop that into there. And there it is. Now, this is an encrypted file, so when I open it, um, it will not save to the real hard disk. It'll just be locked inside this safe, which is just what we want. And if I restart this computer, it will do something called unmount. So, it'll unmount the volume, which will it will not make it visible and in order to get it back again you've got to put in your password. So that's how that whole system works and you can manage it all from TrueCrypt if you want, you've, you're done for the session for the day and you just want to dismount you can do that manually. So just click on dismount and now if I go to access this here it's not available. So in order to get it back again I'd have to open up TrueCrypt um, sorry, select the file again, save for, open it and then mount, put in my password, and I'm back again inside my safe. That's all for today, so thanks for listening.